CD-ROMs were a major technological leap back in the early 90s. All of a sudden, our portable storage capacity jumped from the 3.5 megabyte floppies we were using to over 700 megabytes crammed on this little disk. And it didn't take long for game designers to stop and think, hey, these things are like little laser disks. We could put movies and stuff on them, and we could make kick-ass games out of that. Well, yes, they could put movies on them, but the whole kick-ass games thing just didn't happen for the most part. Sure, there were some early examples in those days of great games with FMV like The Seventh Guest or Myst, but even then the FMV was more a hindrance. And what have we here? Perhaps the pages you work so hard for? <laughs> Look at this fuckstick. Who let him out? Whoops. Back then it was just so awesome to see movies and stuff like that happen on your computer though, but it didn't take long for the novelty of FMV to wear off, and the gaming community realized that they bought a bunch of games that were huge piles of dog shit, and we rebelled against them like when people declared Disco dead once and for all. And what's my payback? A million pounds of tube steak. What? The first ones I got were games with tacked on FMVs like Mega Race. A fairly bland car shooter hosted by the painfully unfunny Lance Boyle. A guy so dreadful he didn't even warrant a cheesy laugh track. Thanks to you, criminals everywhere are turning to each other and saying, I want my mommy. Hey, I'm Lance Boyle and it doesn't hurt a bit. Then there was Critical Path, a game that took me about four months to even get working because in those days, quick time was a piece of shit. And even then it was one of the worst games I'd ever witnessed, not only because you died constantly, but because you had to keep sitting through some of the worst FMV acting in history. It's just a game. A sick game. With some maniac pulling the strings. Welcome to my facility. <laughs> I'm General Min. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the wonderful gun. <laughs> And really, once you knew all the patterns and codes, the game only turned out to be like 20 minutes long. Almost as soon as the technology became available, they started porting in arcade shooters like Space Pirates, Crime Patrol, and they barely counted as games. Let's kick some butt. He roused our! At some point, you just played it to chuckle at the cornball acting because, let's face it, you were playing a light gun rail shooter with your mouse. This galaxy is mine! Who can stop this mad pirate? We are under huh. attack. Repeat, what does this remind me of? <laughs> Roll fizzle beef. Well, the production values for some of these games were huge, and they started roping in movie stars to appear in them, like the Daedalus Encounter. The Daedalus Encounter starring Tia Carrere in the hottest role of her career. It's an action. Yeah, right. There were a lot of others that sort of blurred together in their mediocrity, like Iron Helix, The Journeyman Project, or Microcosm. Sierra made a few games like Gabriel Knight 2 and Phantasmagoria, which were pretty good, but the latter of which also serves as a shining example of why FMV is generally a really, really bad idea. But honestly, the game is this glorious mashup of being hilariously bad, while at the same time being profoundly fucked up that it becomes completely awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you the possessed madman who puts a smile on your face before he puts a scythe blade in it, Crazy Don! A woman's body is a wonderful thing, but the head is useless! That's right, he's possessed with the soul of a psycho demon slash sorcerer, but sometimes you've just gotta laugh! But this game gets dark, man. Like when Don scalps an old lady and wears it as a hat. Let's order some pizza. A little extra sauce, huh? <laughs> but even Don has his limits, and he knows how to keep that pimp hand strong. Oh, you do not get much more own than that. But a lot of people know about Phantasmagoria, but I have a couple favorites not many people remember. 
Take-Two Interactive put forward one of the most ambitious interactive movie projects I've ever seen called Ripper, which is a weird little sci-fi murder mystery spread out over six CDs involving the most star-studded cast I've ever seen on a game, including, get this, Christopher Walken, John Rhys Davies, Paul Giamatti, Tani Welch, David Patrick Kelly, Burgess Meredith, and Jimmy Walker. And it's all set to Blue Oyster Cult's Don't Fear the Reaper. Are you kidding me? This game nearly caused a rift in the Space Awesome Continuum. They basically advertised it as a movie, which was genius. Seriously, just sit back and watch this. It's about catching a killer. You know, to catch the Ripper, you're going to have to outthink him. The police bar. I'm sure they're in on it. Run over it, Rod. The Falcon Eddie? Well, I think you got it. The wheels of justice may grind slowly, but they're moving. They're moving. Get yourself caught in those wheels, Quinlan. You'll be in a lot of pain. Get the guy out of my head, his stealth, his tools. I've been collecting knives for 30 years. I don't have a clue what kind of blade he's using. He's out. This on your conscience. He strikes again. Mr. Quinlan, if you have a knife with a man's fingerprints on it, Talk to that reporter, so help me. I will kill you because I know what drives him to it. So don't you dare think you understand that killer. Or me. Oh, that's just brilliant. You could get this in theaters, man. But honestly, don't fear the Reaper. The song actually does have some major significance. The lyrics are key to solving the final puzzle of the game and finding out who Jack the Ripper is. Because the title of the song sort of sounds like Don't Fear the Ripper. Reaper. Ooh, see, that's weak, okay? I see what you did there, but ouch. I even read that Christopher Walken wasn't even happy with the version of the song they ended up using for the game. I'll be honest, fellas, it was sounding great, but I could have used a little more cowbell. It's this weird little era of gaming that's slowly being forgotten, mainly because these games are so hard to get running anymore on modern computers. Computers are actually too sophisticated to run them anymore. Most of these games ran on DOS, which, if you know how to use DOSBox, may not pose much of a problem, but a lot of them were coded to run specifically on Windows 3.1, a titanic piece of shit that ran on top of DOS, and was hard enough to get running at the time. For instance, this is the best I ever managed to pull off the Star Trek Klingon game. Koi kelles pook lod, koi pook bet pook, yak bo mak bo jeshu mi, se mak shu me bu, ma shu ma nong, e mak shu chu, ni be ye pi mak shu o tron, ku, bat ma chen bet el jo pi, ma fa bu ma di me tarek, ma tu tak tu ma del ko ma shu tak, ma o. Kapla! Now back in 1998, Take-Two Interactive released another game much like Ripper called The Black Dahlia. It claimed to star Dennis Hopper and Terry Garr, even though they only appeared in the game for like a few minutes. But what really struck me about a lot of these FMV games, especially the Take-Two Interactive ones, was how many discs they came packed with. Ripper came packed with six, and Black Dahlia shipped with eight. Eight discs. And this wasn't even the most of all these games. You knew these games were trouble when you got them, because you knew you'd be switching discs to go anywhere constantly. There were games like Seventh Guest, Eleventh Hour, Dark Side of the Moon, where you would have to switch discs going to different rooms in the same building. Under a Killing Moon was the worst for that. You know, frankly, I'm pretty insulted. Now hey, don't get me wrong. I loved that game. Under a Killing Moon was a great game, but you'd have to switch between four CDs two or three times just going down the street. No! I remember Black Dahlia having some of the best acting of any game I'd seen. And even though it's agonizing slow most of the time, and it doesn't make much sense, it's easily better than the lame-ass Black Dahlia movie with Josh Hartnett. Mostly, I help out with the hobos. It's pretty fun, and even pretty doing? horrific at times. Especially when the torso killer starts sending you yeah, packages. Man told me you'd give me a nickel if I gave this to you. Alright. 
I'm game. Here you go. Thanks, mister. Hey, what's in here? I don't know. 